Let's take a look at the control room functionality found in Cubase. The control room allows you to do headphone mixes, set up speaker switching, and listen to external source of breeze. The control room is actually set up in our VST connections window. So we go to our VST connections, and what we want to do is click on the studio tab. Here we can define and add different elements by right clicking. So I can add a talkback microphone. I could add up to six external inputs. So if I said, okay, I want to add an external input, we'll call it two track. We'll hit okay. And now what I need to do is to define where in my audio interface this is connected. So this is going to use the available connections in my audio interface. So my inputs and outputs there. So I would define where my two track is connected into my audio interface. If I wanted to add another studio, let's say for my bass player for his headphone mixes. And let's add my trusty NS10 monitors from Yamaha. We'll hit OK. So now one important consideration is when you go to your outputs tab, it's very easy to double bus or to send the signal to two different sources. So you want your actual connections defined here, but set to not connected. So once again, define the outputs here, but set it to not connected. Otherwise, the sound will be double bust and kind of doubled. Now we'll open up our control room here from our device menu. Now one important consideration is that the master fader on our mixer will actually be affected in the gain stage, whereas our control room monitor is actually controlling just the volume. So we can adjust this volume without affecting our gain structure. So that's why you want to use the control room. Now the control room can have uh, additional window views. So if I wanted to click here in the lower right hand corner, I could see my different monitors and I could now switch between my monitors and I could use keyboard shortcuts to actually switch between my monitors. So again, we're going straight from our D to A to our, to our monitors, allowing us to switch without using a piece of hardware to color the signal. Clicking in the lower left-hand corner will allow me to switch between my different external input sources. So if I listen to my DVD in 5.1 or my iPod or my two-track analog tape machine, clicking here, I can see uh, my plug-in rack as well as toggle it between metering. If I go one more view up top here, I could see my uh, different headphone mixes or studios labeled here, as well as when I switch my speakers, I could have the label set up up top. Now, one of the nice things you could do is actually attenuate each of the volumes of the speaker. So if one set of monitors is louder or softer than the others, you could attenuate it so that when you actually play back and switch between your speakers that you have roughly the same volume levels. Now we can also come over here and turn off and on each of our speakers and this is very handy for doing 5.1 mixing. So if I wanted to see what my mix sounded like without by bypassing the center channel or by bypassing the LFE, I could just simply do my little solo each of the speakers right here in the matrix view. I could also solo just my front speakers, my left and right stereo, or my left, center, right, or my rear channels. Or let's say I was doing a critical mix in my rear speakers, I could actually just flip the rear speakers to play back out of the front speakers. Now if I need more options, I could just simply come right over here and I could use my mix convert plugin. So this would allow me to take my 5.1 and listen to it in LRC or LRS, or if I wanted to listen to it in quadraphonic, or stereo, or even mono, I could just simply do all my down mixing right there with my plugin. Now one of the other things that's very handy is the listen bus. You may notice in a lot of tracks when you start playing it in your mixer view you see this little L. And what the listen bus can do is you can enable it right here in your control room. So let's say uh, the whole band was tracking and I wanted to kind of listen to a track. I didn't want it to affect their headphones, but I also wanted to kind of have it in what's called a, like almost a solo safe mode. So now as I come over here to my listen bus, I can, instead of soloing just a track, we'll come here and let's set it to our correct speaker. Solo the track. I just hear the bass. 
now when I hit the listen bus, the other tracks will be kind of muted by, I have it set to minus 20 dB and you can have that set up there. So soloing versus the listen bus. So that way I can still hear it in context of the track. Now we could also listen to our external input. So let's say if the client brought an iPod, you could actually click on the iPod and now you're listening to the iPod in your control room. Or if you want to listen to a live DVD concert that you're using as a reference, you can now listen to that in 5.1. Now we have our mixes here for our headphones. Now if I wanted to come to my bass, one of the things that we could do is actually adjust your headphone mix in your mixer view or you could do it from your inspector. So right click here and enable the audio studio sense. And now when you come over here, you could actually see that often you may have to start from scratch and enable each of your studio sense here and set the level, which can be a little tedious if you have a large number of tracks. Now one of the things that we could do is we're gonna select the top track, go all the way down to our bottom track, and now we're going to come right over here and right click in a gray area. And I want to go to all of my studios and we're going to enable all of our studios. And that's basically going to turn on all the studios for all of our tracks. And I want to use the current mix levels. So I'll just use the current mix levels. We'll sign that. And now when I come over here, a lot of times we'll find that the bands will want what's called almost a more me headphone mix. So if I select the bass, I can now send the bass directly here and give the bass player more of themselves in their headphone mix. So I take the bass and I could send the bass out to the guitarist headphone mix. I could vary the levels and come right here. So this way I could easily set up a more me headphone mix in just a few mouse clicks. Now if someone is saying that they're not hearing a particular element in their headphone mix and you didn't want to necessarily run around the studio and put on their headphones, you can now audition each of the headphone mixes right here. So if I want to listen to Studio One, which is a drum headphone mix, or the vocalist headphone mix, the guitarist headphone mix, or the bass player's headphone mix, we could do it right there, or I could listen to my mix in the control room that's independent from each of their mixes. Now we could also communicate effectively using our talkback system. So once I enable talkback, I could come over here and I could turn on my talkback and this way I could communicate to everyone except for the vocalist. Or if I wanted to enable the vocalist and talk to only the vocalist and not to the rest of the band. And again, I could have a keyboard shortcut to turn on my talk back microphone. Now we could also be creative with our click track. So let's say the drummer wants to hear the click track. The guitar player wants to hear the click track. The bass player wants to hear the click track. But the singer doesn't. So you could actually turn off the click track in each of the headphone mixes. Now, if I wanted to, the bass player wanted the click track in their right headphone mix and the bass drum in their left headphone mix, we could just simply do that as well. So as you can see, whether you're switching speakers or setting up your headphone mixes, listening to external sources, the control room is an incredibly powerful aspect of Cubase.